is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Ride, ride, ride. You think anybody got the great kazoo mention that I had right there in that uh, whole thing? <laughs> no, very few people did. Yeah, probably very few. <laughs> Very few. You got to be a hardcore Flintstones fan to know who the great kazoo is. Anyway, uh, so uh, hell of a win, brother. And obviously, we talked about it late night. And uh, a lot of people actually hung in there uh, for that one, which I was impressed. Uh, where are we at injury-wise overall from uh, from this whole thing? Well, I mean, look, it's perfect time for a bye week, right? Yes. I mean, they, they, they get this week off now. They can rest guys that are probably playing with stuff. Uh, as it is, you're going to get Jalen Rivers back, I think, uh, for, for the uh, Louisville game in two weeks. And uh, and so I think they're going to be in good shape. I don't think anybody was seriously hurt in this game. Beyond bumps and bruises, there's nobody who really left uh, and, and left it, left this game with major injuries. So I think uh, I think they're going to be in good shape. And, and you get your starting left tackle back, which I think will make a huge difference. Yeah. We've seen that uh, Markel yeah. Bell... As good as he might be in the future, is is you know playing prematurely a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you could tell that the kid's not ready yet at this point in time. And they and they and again, this is kind of what I was telling people, you know, where you're winning some of these games and you know it's not easy and you're you're taking it to the wire. Um, you're you're Mario still doesn't have his team yet. It's this is year three only, and and like I said. And I've said this over and over again, when Mario or any coach has their team is when they've been able to go through an entire cycle of players right. where when they got there, they have a group that's been there now four or five years and they're graduating. And then in that fourth and five, fifth year, they're teaching the freshmen, and the sophomores how to do what the what the program requires. You know what I'm saying? He Absolutely. hasn't gotten to that cycle yet. So until you really get to that cycle, you probably won't really have all your players that you really want or the depth with some experience that you want, because every year you'll have your blowouts and you'll play your young guys and then they'll get better and be prepared for those moments. And so right now he's still not there. And that's why this roster is still, you know, kind of incomplete or inexperienced. Yeah, if you if you go through Miami's defensive starters and you say uh, which guys are high school recruits, which guys are are uh, you know transfers that Mario's had to get out of the transfer portal, just looking at snaps. Okay, these are the top ten guys in snaps. Uh, Mish Powell transfer, Kiko uh, Maui Noah transfer, Daryl Porter Jr. transfer, uh, Tyler Barron transfer, Jadis Richard transfer, uh, Akeem Mesador transfer, Deani Hill. Uh, transferred. Uh, that, what is that? Eight, right? So you, you basically have Jaden Harris and Wesley Besaint are the two uh, high school. Uh, oh, and OJ Frederic. Those are the three high school recruits in terms of snap count on defense. So it still shows you that that little example right there shows you how uh, you haven't gotten to the point yet where you're recruiting really is what you're built, you built your foundation on. And I don't know that any team will ever get to the point anymore where it's solely high school recruiting that you build on, but in terms of where they are in their progress, right, where they are in the rebuild, uh, they're still counting on far too many transfers uh, to win games. Yeah, well, but that's kind of how it goes early mm -hmm. on because you, you can't be carried by a bunch of freshmen that you recruit. It's just, right. just going to happen, you know what I mean? So those freshmen and sophomores have to get the experience while you have those those transfers carry some of the load for you and get you through, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. Now... Uh, Cam Ward, uh, absolutely fantastic. It's been fun to watch. Um, the only thing, my only advice would, for Cam Ward would be, you're not really helping your draft stock nearly as much the last couple of weeks. You've got to start uh, avoiding those bad decisions and those throws across your body. You can get away with it at times at this level. At the next level, Every scout is cringing every time you do that. So I know he came here to kind of, you know, build up his draft stock even more. And obviously right. the, the comeback and the coolness and the playmaking, it's all there. But he's got to stay away from those those bad decisions. That will scare some NFL people, man. 
A hundred percent. Oh, and, and look, uh, the reason uh, guys like Patrick Mahomes get away with that, where they can make a mistake every once in a while is because they win Super Bowls, right? And they and they win you a bunch of games. Cam Ward has that quality to him. He certainly uh, won, you know, was a big reason why Miami came back to win that game against Kyle. But if you look at the last two games, uh, his play is also the reason why Miami was in nail biters because he was turning the, the ball over. He was making poor throws, poor decisions. And you're 100% right. You got to get rid of the ball faster at the next level. You cannot, not every play is going to, you're, you're going to be able to stand back there and just survey and wait and wait and wait for somebody to get open. I think part of, you know, Cam struggles. Sandlot football. It's not Sandlot football at the next level, dude. You just uh, can't play. The guy. But, but I think part of the issue too is, again, you and I talk about talent and, and where Miami is and the receiver position always comes up, right? It's like Xavier Strepo, great college slot receiver. Uh, but the guys on the outside, are they getting open enough? Are they getting creating the separation where he can get rid of the ball consistently? I think the answer is no, because if guys were open, I'm pretty sure he would fire that ball quickly, uh, you know, when they when they initially opened th those routes. And, and he's not because he's he's surveying, he's seeing the zone coverage, he's seeing the man coverage, and he's saying, I can't throw this ball. So think about how many interceptions he hasn't thrown uh, versus the ones he, he maybe necessarily has. And, and what does that say? That has that has to do with, you know, those receivers uh, maybe not being as elite as, as you'd want them to be. And, again, this goes back to Mario and his recruiting, you know. When you get, when do you get to that point where this really looks like Alabama or Ohio State or one of those championship-level teams? Yeah, it's and, – and we're and, – and, again, I know people, they don't want to hear this, but it takes some time, and it's probably year four or five when we're mm -hmm. going to get to that point. Uh, but in the process, you want to see progress. And guess yeah. what you've seen this year? You've seen progress because the last two weeks are games that you easily would have lost, bro. Easily mm -hmm. would have lost the last 10, 12 years. Okay? So that's progress for me. Is everything perfect? Of course not. But shit, dude, you're 6-0, and bro. Yeah. You're number six in the country. You're 2-0 and and you're in the ACC. You just won – a hell of a game on the road in a tough environment. You know, I know Florida is not the greatest team, but that was a tough environment. So for now, you're watching what you need from Mario because you, you watch on Sundays and there is no progress from that coach. You watch on Saturdays, Mario's making progress. And to me, that's where I can wait for years four and five because now I'm watching that progress from year three. The first two years... <laughs> it was yeah. kind of watch you know what i'm saying but now yeah. you kind of sit back and say okay it isn't a bunch of crap that's coming from the sidelines or anything like that it's just kids being kids and they're young and they're and you can't count on them to be perfect out there all the time no and that's why like people were getting on uh, lance gidry and saying what's wrong with this guy well go back and 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 you know miami's defensive coordinator because of all the big plays that cal had go back and look at the at the four pass plays of 50 yards or more those are yeah. coverage busts. Those are the kids not doing what they're supposed to do and 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 being in the places that they're supposed to be. So you can sit here and certainly uh, criticize uh, previous coaching staffs at Miami for, for, for the jobs that they've done and player development and all that kind of stuff. But I think, you know, we knew going into this season, Miami was going to have a tough time replacing some of those guys that they had at Cam Kitchens in the secondary uh, who lined guys up the right way. You're going to be missing. You're going to be counting on some freshmen. Uh, and second year guys to have to make some 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 plays and on defense and and what happened uh, against Cal was you just had some bad plays done by the players. I, I didn't see anything scheme wise where I was like, oh man, they right. keep picking Miami apart with the yeah. same exact play. They weren't doing that. This was these were individual coverage busts. If you go back and, and look at those plays, yeah, there was one uh, run offensively where. Was it Bain that missed the tackle or somebody? And then the the kid escaped for like. 30 yards or something mm -hmm. Baron I think it was Baron that Tyler made Baron a, yeah it was Baron that made the bad play and then yep. and, but again you had <clears throat> what do you do pick on Tyler Baron <laughs> like, yeah oh, oh he's been a complete stud he made a mistake okay you know the tight end make it drops a ball whatever I mean shit happens bro it's I again it's not stuff that like I'm not watching an offensive coordinator run an offense that doesn't fit the the quarterback and we would complain right. about what the hell is going on here? I'm not watching you when you're supposed to take a knee, not take a knee. I'm not, you know, there are things that, that are not going on anymore right now. And that's what I, that's what I have to see 
from the sidelines. Now the next thing is the players. And that's the next level, bro. That takes over the next couple. Because you got to really think of it. While well, it's his third year, it's really his first year where he kind of has his kind of players. He right. didn't really have overall his kind of players the first two years because he had to weed them out. Yep. Correct. And you, you and, and it takes time to get there. He, he got the quarterback now that he that that obviously can make all the difference. He's got uh veteran guys in the defensive line. He didn't necessarily always have those guys, the the, the kind the of guys that you the big the bodies, the O line, the big bodies, right. All all of those things. And and look, it's not it hasn't been perfect, but right now they're six and oh. They're at the midway point of the season. They don't have a ranked opponent on the schedule left at the moment because Louisville lost two, they've lost their second game in a row. They got Virginia this week was four and one. So uh, it is very much a situation where they take care of business, they finish the regular season unbeaten, and it doesn't matter what happens in the ACC championship game. And I think if you're a Miami fan, I mean, what were, what were we all saying? Get to the ACC championship and win or get into the playoff, right? And, and that's it doesn't matter. It does matter huh? now because it does matter now because you might be the best team in the ACC, so you need to win it. Oh well, yeah. Well, if you're if you, I I think if they go unbeaten in the regular season, it doesn't matter that they'll go in the yeah. playoffs. Whether they win it or they don't, I totally right. understand. But right. if the season continues to play out this way, and you get to the championship, and you you are undefeated, mm -hmm. you better you you better you better you better hand an ACC title over to your fan base, bro. You better right. You should. Yeah. But I will say this: Clemson Clemson certainly looks a lot better than they did uh, week one against Georgia. So that 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 I'm that's the game I'm looking forward to. I want to see Miami right. Clemson play. Right, right. That's that, and that's mm -hmm. the game that that's the measuring stick. Yep. You know, Florida State isn't one right now. The measuring stick has has been Clemson. You know, Florida State right. flash in the pan last year, but overall has been Clemson. So you need to, you know, take that. You you need to knock the king off the mountain. hundred percent. By the way, if you're able to do it in year three, where technically it's his first year where he has his guys, that would be a hell of an accomplishment. And I think more than anything else, oh, what I what I think Miami fans are going to want at the end of the season is to know that next year there's not going to be a Florida State type fall off, right? Because Florida State yeah. fans were feeling damn good about themselves last year, and this year they're one in five. And I think the difference between Mario and Mike Norvell is that Mario invested a lot more time and energy in high school recruiting to a, to, to build a sustainable winner. And I think right now you're seeing that when you live and die just with the portal, you could have a year like this where you don't hit on guys and you go one and five. And I think for Miami's purposes, what you want to see Miami do after Cam Ward goes to the NFL and you lose some of these guys uh, to the draft, that you come back and you continue to be a contender year in and year out. And that's and that's really what Miami fans want more than anything else. Yeah, but you and you and I have talked about this already. If you do this, they'll be in line waiting to come to play for yep. you. Yep, 100 percent the next quarterback that's frustrated where he's at is going to, oh, shit, I'm going to Miami, bro. Mm -hmm. Chris Paul's got this thing going, and, and then you just keep building everything else, and kids are just going to want to come, and parents and, and guardians are going to want to send their kids here 100%. because it's a better place for them to get ahead. You know what I'm 100%, saying? 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right, what do you got going on so they can uh, check you out there at The Athletic, my friend? Well, got my oddly specific predictions that I put turn in every single week. I, I have 36 and 18, I think, for the season, uh, which is a pretty good record for my for my straight up uh, picks. Uh, I have that. I'll, I'll be doing, I'm sure, a midseason uh, report podcast for, for Wide Right. That'll be coming out for, for Canes fans. I'm recording that tomorrow. Uh, we have our ACC power rankings, all that kind of stuff. So if, uh, if you want to read about uh, not just Miami, but everything going on in college football, come check out my stuff at The Athletic. Does Miami become top five after this week? Somebody lose? Yeah, I think I think so. You got you got Oregon, Ohio State playing this week, so one of them is going to lose. So you'll you'll definitely they're definitely going to slide up to uh, to top five status. And and let's not forget, Penn State has to go play at USC, and Penn State's ranked ahead of Miami as well. So those are those are potentially two teams. I like that. Uh, yeah, I like could it. be a big week for the Canes. My week. That is that's a that's a beautiful yep. thing. All right, that's follow. Correct. At Manny underscore Navarro. Manny, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up on Friday. Anytime, brother. Take care. Thank you, sir. Canesware, you want 10% off? We got it for you. Use our code, BIG010. 
You can get 10% off on anything and everything practically with a Canes logo on it. They got those new Canes sneakers coming too, by the way. Uh, go check it out. Use our code BIG010. You will get 10% off. And they've got Dolphins gear. They've got Miami Heat gear. Now that the Heat are starting. Panthers, they start tonight. The Panthers, baby, come on. You got championship gear and everything. So if you haven't gotten your Florida Panthers championship hat or shirt or something like that, Go down to Canesware. Check it out, man. Enter Miami. Messy kits. All of that. Messy shirts. They've got all kinds of Inter Miami hats and flags and bracelets and you name it, man. They've got it there at Canesware. My Canesware at Miami Fanware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Tell them that Big O sent you. And by the way, if you order online over $99, you will get free shipping. So not only will you get 10% off when you use our code Big O10, you will get free shipping when you order over $99 at Canesware. This is the Big O Show. This is the 